Dear colleagues and friends, welcome to Prelude, a mini interview series about opera produced and presented for educational purposes by Atelier d'Excellence. The current episode is supported by the 360 online blog and community. Its founder, Eugenia Forteza, will participate with two questions in video format as it wasn't possible, unfortunately, for her to join us live due to a professional engagement. Today, we are very honored to be hosting one of opera's brightest stars, internationally acclaimed soprano, Miss Priti Yen. <laughs> Welcome, Priti. Thank Welcome. you for having me. And happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy thank birthday you. to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for taking your time on your special day. Really, it means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a special, I mean, on the day of your birthday, you give a special gift to our audience instead of us giving you a gift to share <laughs> your experience and your life path with us. So thank you very, very much. Uh, Preeti, I will pass to my first question for you. Uh, what urged you, I would like to ask, for, to move from Petre Tiff, the small town you grew up in, in Cape Town, to enroll in the South African College of Music? And what was the transition like for you moving from the small town to the bigger city to pursue your studies there? I think I was so excited about the possibility of pursuing music after I learned about opera that I was just so excited. And luckily I had my parents who actually drove me to Cape Town which is about 18 plus hours drive from Petra Teeth to Cape Town. So it was a nice long trip to Cape Town. Of course, uh, Cape Town is a big city. So it was exciting to see the mountain, the Table Mountain, and the weather is so beautiful in Cape Town at the time. Um, the challenge was really mostly about finding myself in an environment of people that I thought were extraordinarily uh, talented because I had just found out about my own talent and I felt that I wasn't good enough. I still think that, which is not true, but it's there. <laughs> um, so the challenge was to really um, have this opportunity to uh, also accept my own gift and to look at my own path and my own journey in discovering how to optimize it, how to use the voice and how far I can be, uh, you know, go with it. Very nice. Thank you very much, Priti. Uh, Yanis, the next question is yours. Ask about, yes, uh, because we, we always, uh, as people who kind of come from another country, like in, in, in Europe, we always are asked, uh, how were you prepared? How everything helped you? move on and and um, go a step forward how did this um south african choral and and your the general culture or the university of cape town prepare you for this this great career that is opening i was very very lucky and i'm sure my colleague sunny boy would remember how uh, much um the education and preparation for any opera singer in the uct's uh, schools school of music is like it's like the top we had uh, incredible, incredible mentors from Angelo Gobato, who's Italian, to uh, my voice teacher at the time, uh, Virginia David. So that upbringing really prepared me so much that <coughs> anything that I learned afterwards coming to Europe, I had already good backbone from the teachings um, in, in, in Cape Town. And I think the most important one that really plays a huge role for me is the fact that, uh, you know, he, uh, Angelo would insist on learning languages, the importance of speaking Italian, the importance of speaking all these languages that we get to sing, because they really contribute to the totality and the confidence uh, for yourself as you are, you know, interpreting uh, whatever role that you, you, you might be interpreting. But at the very same time, the study about ways of uh, communicating as an artist on stage, how to be on stage, how to work, how to uh, prepare yourself uh, scenically uh, on stage. And those are the things that I think when I eventually went to uh, Milano, uh, that kind of concentration was not um, that much compared to South Africa. So in a way, when I came overseas, I was a bit more advanced <coughs> in, in, in that sense. Oh, well, 
Uh, since you're talking about, you, you just mentioned Professor Angelo Kupata. So many of uh, people here might not know him. He's the, he's the we call him the, the guru of opera in South Africa. He is uh, a professor who has helped so many South Africans, uh, to especially black people. I don't want to sound uh, political. Uh, he introduced so many black people, especially like us, me and Pretty, and so many others, into opera. And so, um, since you're mentioning her with Professor David as well as your professor voice teacher, first time meeting them, not knowing coming from this small city, no, no technique, you didn't understand anything. Can you elaborate more? How did they influence or contributed in your um, career and in you finding your own unique voice as an opera singer? Just to to be to have that courage to stand there and 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 sing. Well, they they uh, they were the cornerstone basically because I think we were one of the younger students actually when we enrolled in UCT at the time. And uh, I remember Virginia Davids um, appreciating the fact that even though we have this huge choral community, uh, but I was one of the people who didn't sing a lot in choirs and that helped actually in developing my primal sound without having too many things that she had to undo. Um, and I think one of the biggest uh, uh, lessons that I, I got from them was that they believed in my talent so much that most of the work was for me uh, to, to believe in it too, because they could yeah. see it. I, 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 I had so many people in the, in the school that was so amazing that I never thought I could actually be anywhere near them. And so the whole work was for these mentors of mine to make me believe that uh, my voice too is valid. My gift too can be that prominent, that uh, beautiful and success, and I can have success like uh, I was seeing from the students who were ahead of me. Um, and I think that that is a very important thing in any education system because most of the time, <coughs> the people who are gifted never truly believe uh, because of just the, the because when you are the thing, it's it's hard for you to know that you are the thing because you are the it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the biggest part was really to educate Pretty to look at herself and dream and appreciate her gift too, because um, they believed that uh, I could have success, and they were right. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, since you're talking about that, um, I remember every time when you finish your voice lesson or when your classes were finished you 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 were you were the first one to enter the school and the last one to enter the school to to, to be outside of the school and all the time you used to sit outside and i think i mentioned this because it's so important because our 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 our, our singers that uh, that we work with i think they deserve to know what made you you because you used to sit outside there and listen to so many singers who were way ahead from us listening to their voice lesson how did that help you did that because so many people don't know this story about you that you used to sit there literally sit at the sun city and just listening to because your voice teacher's uh, class was just right by the way yes. to go out of school so you could hear everything absolutely yeah i think i understood like the hunger that i had for growth was so much that i wanted to make sure that i don't miss anything that can help me be a better singer and i was so hungry i am still hungry uh, i did the same when i got to milano i would be in every rehearsal actually juan diego would joke <laughs> and say pretty does, does she have a bed in the theater because she's here every time I'm there when there's an orchestra rehearsal I'm there when there's a you know because I think I just wanted to understand what is this magic yeah. and how I can be part of it because that is what drew me to this incredible art form the, the possibility of being part of something so supernatural you know mm. and I think that helped me a lot Sunny Boy because it also taught me to acknowledge other people's gifts but also at the very same time, not to, dim to diminish mine mm, or mm. to belittle mine, mm. because uh, it, our industry is full of greatness everywhere. 
you know you're not the only person who's great in the room every gift has incredible excellence so you have to be comfortable with being amongst greatness without actually making making yourself small and so i think those were the lessons that were very very important for me to instill right there from the beginning that yes i can learn from the most gifted one to yeah. the least gifted gifted one but mm. uh, everybody is valuable and you can yeah. learn from anybody this is spot on since we have so many young singers especially a uh, few of them they know you then they are watching today it's so exciting that we have you what what would you say to those ones who are at school right now during this terrible time would you say being patient is 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 what helped you to be to to become who you are today i mean from school talking from school being at the university at the university i think yeah. one of the things that helped me a lot was the fact that i was never too afraid to try anything hmm. I understood that it was my time to learn and I'm going to make sure that I learn as much as possible. So that meant that every try would be a hit or miss, but I, my learning process will still move forward because when you try, you are never the same, you know, yeah. you grow. Even yeah. if your colleagues can laugh at you and make yeah. fun of you, uh, because you know they are doing it better than you yeah. but i i trusted i wanted to learn to trust my process of growth yeah. because it was my it was my inheritance to learn yeah. i was yeah. there to learn and i needed to make sure that i use each and every opportunity to learn actually one of my colleagues would actually make fun of me and say pretty near Pretty takes everything so serious, you know? Mm. You know, but for me, the smallest of tasks, I wanted to make it special. The biggest of tasks, like nothing for me was just there. No, I wanted to make sure that I, it's done right and I, I use mm. that opportunity for growth. So mm. I would say that um, that process of your growth is very important and don't let anybody steal that possibility because it's your time to learn and, um, Patience, yes, but also being very smart, being very aware on how to navigate. See if you are being, you know, if you're getting better and if you're not getting better, mm -hmm. what can I do to be better? Mm -hmm. And um, how, what can I do to be, to improve? And also not forgetting the joy of the process because the learning process is, is it's, it's that joy um that's thank you for, for that and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are learning from that uh i guess my next question will be as uh, you, you were the first artist in the history of belvedere competition to win the first prize in every category <laughs> also you went on to win first prize of opera among many other prizes you've uh, you've been awarded with do, do you think competition played a big role in your career Absolutely. Uh, I actually strategically used um, competitions because I was, as I had mentioned a little earlier, that when I got to the University of Cape Town and saw these amazing artists, incredible talent, I asked myself, why are they not going overseas? Because they deserved uh, an international careers. And then I said to myself, what can I do uh, to get myself overseas? And obviously the impediment was, was 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 finances you know and so i had to think of a way that would allow me to get overseas and at least maybe ask for sponsorship for a, a return ticket and then so instead of asking for a huge amount of money to do audition tours overseas so i thought if i used competitions i could use them as a way to audition but i had to be very clear that i'm not competing to win i'm not competing with my i'm i'm actually coming from south africa saying i've just found out that i have this what do you think and do i really have what it takes when i look at my colleagues who are the best of the best and they've known about this art from way be, way you know before than me yeah. and so that ended up actually being uh an incredible way because i was winning all these competitions not because well, how can I put it better? <laughs> I wasn't competing. <laughs> 
for me, it was just a, an audition. And that mindset exempted me from comparing myself to the next person or wanting to beat the next person. And this was another lesson for me too, because, yeah. you know, as I mentioned, you are always going to be surrounded by excellence. So you can never be um, intimidated by other people's excellence. You need to actually just acknowledge it and be part of it and enjoy the process. So that was another lesson too, in, in a sense. And I continued to actually do competitions when I was in La Scala, because when I got to La Scala, I was overwhelmed because the method of teaching was very different to South Africa. In South Africa, I only had my voice teacher, a pianist, and Angelo Copato for, you know, so, and they were all, uh, you know, in agreement in a way. So they would, you know, talk, how can we, you know, how is Pretty doing? How can we help Pretty? But then I, when I got to Milano, it was like 12 people and it was quite overwhelming with information and sometimes i felt like they were not agreeing with each other and yeah. so in a way i needed to to hold on to something that would make me still feel that i'm still growing and that's why i actually entered uh, the operalia cool so since you're talking about the experience of being also uh, in in this big pond from a small I mean, in the ocean from a small pond. Right. Do you think people were ready to hear something unique like like you, like you have as as a? And now I don't mean to be political as well. As a black singer, do you think people were ready for something fresh like you? I think human beings are never ready for something new. <laughs> we are always comfortable with what we know. And so, and this I have to thank my parents because the way I was brought up, I was brought up in a loving environment that made me, uh, or, you know, know that even if you can be the different person in the room, you're not going to look at the next person in a different way. Mm -hmm. So love is a big part of who I am and how I grew up and how mm -hmm. I would like the world also to perceive. And uh, I knew, Sunny Boy, that, okay, it is a new territory, yes. And not just for Pretty, but for you too, La Scala, you know, to have me as your first Black uh, uh, artist in, 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 in the history of your theater. So we are just going to learn together. So that was the attitude that I had. And this obviously comes from home, you know, because yeah. if I was always going to be the person being feeling out of place, it was going to be impossible for me to even make a career, you know. Yeah. And so our shared love for the art form, ultimately from our gifts, made us comfortable with the new. <laughs> wow. Because ulti ultimately, it has always been about the music. It doesn't get it doesn't get better than what you just said that you were not there, you were full aware that you were you were going to a place where you know it's not your place, but then you made it comfortable for you, and you also understood the other side as well that you know learn something from me as much as I will learn something from you. I think this is something that is very important for our young singers because we tend to um, forget that. Uh, we are different nations and we all go through different difficulties and of course when you are thrown in this huge business that is hard enough and you are just one has to be ready for criticism and all these other things there's so much going on it is so important to always stay positive in understanding that so many people need to understand who you are where you come from as much as they they are willing to understand who you are and where you come from and i think that's a big thing it is also because you are always going to be surrounded by the creative space is a, a space of um, faith yeah and it's it can be quite intimidating uh, to be in that space but that's the environment and yeah. so you have a task to your gift and the task is to protect it the task is to grow the, the task is to also learn and so i've always been the youngest person in the room so obviously i have so many people who've got great expertise i need to have the awareness 
to be able to take information, but also to know when I'm not being helped or when I was looking for help and I was not being assisted and not be a bad person about it or hate. Just understand that some people would want to help but are unable to help you. And sometimes you are going to need help and in places that probably you're not going to be in, you know, helped. And so it's very, very important to be calm as best as you can be and to be a peaceful person <laughs> because uh, we're dealing with harmony and melody and it's, it's all beautiful. And so I believe that that from those notes, we can learn <laughs> to implement it in our daily life as well. If I may say, this shows pretty how important it is for an artist to be also a person of principles, to have some values and some principles above every, everything else and believe in them and, and carve their own path with these values. Also it, it because is... we are human beings first. Exactly. What we do is, is our gifts are there to make something beautiful in this earth, but first and foremost, we are human beings first. And yeah. we have to, to stay happy ones, not uh, driven only by the ambition and uh, the passion for something that doesn't bring joy. In the, in the way you describe it, it seems that you always have joy in it. And this is such an important message for our mentees and the young artists we are speaking with. And, so, and uh, success please. comes, I'm sorry, success comes. You know, Sunny Boy touched about patience. I think it's very, very important. It comes. Don't rush it. Because ultimately, the impossible dreams that we dream, we sort of have to grow into them so that they mm -hmm. don't overwhelm us. Otherwise, if everything comes too quickly, how are you going to, you know, stay? Because it's always easy to go there, but how can you maintain it? You know, stay there and, 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 and thrive. Anyway, <laughs> awesome. no, um, awesome advice, true. Uh, we will go back with the next question to your years in Milano when uh, you found yourself uh, from Cape Town to Italy as a member of the Young Artist Program of the Teatro La Scala. And I uh, wanted to ask you what kind of challenges did you face at, at this point in terms of the language and having multiple mentors together? And also, how was your experience with one of your greatest mentors in the academy, the legendary Mirella Freni? It was quite overwhelming, of course, because as I had mentioned a little bit earlier, in South Africa, I only had less than five people um, who were managing my, my progress. And uh, when I got to Milano, I had more than 12 people. And so that, that was quite overwhelming. But at the very same time, I grew uh, in character. And I was being challenged to know um, how to be strong also in character, because that's very, very important in an industry where everybody has an opinion and uh, whether it is well intended or not. And so I was very, very excited to have Mirena Freni there in front of us, teaching us because we were admiring her, you know, in CDs when I was still in, in Cape Town. I was like, oh my goodness, her and me is like, the best and now i get a chance to actually be taught by her so i was very very fortunate um one thing that i will say is that uh, i need to thank my my italian teacher who actually told all my colleagues not to speak to me in english if they loved me so they all were forced to speak to me in italian and ultimately she said because that way she she will learn quicker and i actually did i learned it in like three months i started speaking italian and so that helped a lot um uh, uh for my growth and also just to be able to communicate and make milan home you know and start to really be there because i was still stuck at home you know the transition was not so easy i missed uh, my food from south africa i missed just hearing isi zulu i just missed the sunshine i got to milan around october september and it's all gray there's no sun and i felt like i'm fine but i don't feel fine what's wrong i understood later that even the environment the soil just the soil was something very different to I, to what I'd known. And thankfully my family were there to remind me that I said I was gonna go into the world and make the impossible. So this is what it is about. <laughs>
Fantastic. So not just principles, but also a very strong will. <laughs> There's no other way. I think one of the things that any successful a person will say, that there's nothing that you can achieve just by chance. You need to be determined about it. You need to decide, you know, that I really want it. And uh, the willpower, you know, there's no other way. Because when, when it comes to singing and the voice, it's like a chasing a moving a moving target because it grows it, it's not it doesn't stop the growth is progressive and so if your will is not strong enough you're going to give up when you were just about to get it <laughs> yeah since 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 pretty since you were talking about uh mirella freni of course um there are two other important ladies that i want to I want you to talk about, and they have also been a significant um, mentoring figures for you. I think yeah. uh, that was uh, that is uh, that was Montserrat Caballé, of course, because she's late, and uh, yeah. the, the, with the still living legend Mirella De Villa. Yes. What would you share with us about what you've learned from each one of them, and how was the relationship with with you, and how did you get to know them? Okay. Um, with, I'll start with Montserrat Caballé. I did her competition um, before I, I went to, to La Scala. And so I got to know, uh, 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 you know her then. And we, we had this incredible way of just connecting now and again because she really believed in me pursuing uh, the, the Belcanto repertoire. She believed that I have what it takes. I just have to be very sure that I don't sing roles that with a voice that I will have. I need to sing roles with the voice that I have now because then I will thrive, you know, because she believed that I can have a long career, but I need to be very smart in terms of not singing roles with the voice that I will have, but to sing roles with the voice that I have right now because then that way the, the, the voice is always uh, giving signs that this is where I am. Yes, mm. you can challenge yourself, but calculatively, and also just be kind to yourself. <laughs> you know, um, as she knows that this world can be very unkind to artists who are always trying to improve and trying new things. And especially now with our modern time where there's never a safe place to try something new because immediately it's in the internet immediately mm. so she taught me to be very comfortable with being uncomfortable that my growth will be on the global stage and i need to have peace with that um as far as Mariela de Villa is concerned she brought back the joy of singing because i lost a little bit of that when i was in the academy uh, of La Scala, I, I was very overwhelmed and sort of missed the purpose of it all. And she reminded me that uh, whatever I had learned in South Africa was the best way forward in terms of vocal technique. And I should remember that. But also, she was so generous about her way of teaching and making me believe that she's not the only person who does this incredible way of singing, I can do it too. And she was very, very generous when it comes to that. Awesome, you know, since, I mean, you're touching a very sensitive subject coming from South Africa, not knowing anybody, you are in a country where you know nothing and in a different culture as well, yeah. uh, trying to be seen and noticed as an artist, sometimes, uh, so many young singers, I also experienced that you do find those coaches are a little bit ignorant and try yeah. to treat treat you like uh, you are a project. You don't know, but just because yeah. of your background and where you come from, they think that yeah. you don't have enough information or you're not strong enough to, yeah. to, to, to do what is expected of you. For our young singers, what, what is your encouragement in terms of them living where they come from and what they know? to a different country, do you say they should just uh, f uh, stay humble and, and receive? Because it's so easy to, to lose it, you know, it's so easy. Even if you're in the business, you get that one person that takes you off and it's so yeah. difficult to come back. It yeah. takes so much time. What would be your advice for somebody who just started 
and having difficulties and sometimes feel like I want to go back home because I know uh, so many people, they don't know that we're so close, that I know so much that you always say, I just want to stop singing. I want to do that. I want, yeah. you, you are human at the end of the day and not so many of us has that luxury of getting to know that side of you. But yeah. we see only the happy side, but there's a lot in you that you strive you always strive for, for to be better in everything that you do what is your advice to these young singers i would say that this if anything i was never prepared for the hardship of what it takes to make it in this industry i never knew that sometimes or most times i'm fighting rejection like most time. I'm not just talking about other people rejecting me, but self-rejection, you know? And so what I know, what I now know is that those noises, those people that are saying you can't do it are not as powerful as what you tell yourself. Because you are always with yourself and you need to have that good relationship at all times because you are with yourself. And so I would only hope that, you know, you don't meet too many people that are going to make you want to give up. Um, and also when you are a student, of course, you have to be respectful and take information. But also I believe that as a human being, you know when something is helping you or not helping you. At the very same time, I would never, ever, ever change anything that has happened before me. All the hardships that I went through, because they made me strong. They made me also determine which path to take and how, you know, to move forward. So don't give up. Um, go and do the impossible, because that growth is the most important. Because I think I'm more happy that I tried than always to be in Wonderland and wonder, hey, if I did that, if I yeah. did, you know, I, yeah. I don't want to be in, in Wonderland, no. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Very, very nice, pretty. And Sunny Boy, thank you for your question. Now we will pass to the question of 360 of Opera in video format. And we will welcome virtually Eugenia Forteza. Dear Pretty, thank you so much for being here with us today everyone at Atelier d'Excellence and 360 of Opera as well as our audiences are very happy to be able to spend time today with you to get to know you better and to learn from you. My first question is about the Traviata that you're about to read. Oh the question the question was cut I apologize we have to start it again and Maria I please you have to unmute as well it was not unmute the sound was not there but the sound is in the video. Oh, okay. Dear Pretty, thank you so much for being here with us today. Everyone at Atelier d'Excellence and 360 of Opera, as well as our audiences, are very happy to be able to spend time today with you, to get to know you better, and to learn from you. My first question is about the Traviata that you're about to reprise at Wiener Stadtsopper after having debuted it at Opéra de Paris last year. And I would like to know, what did you learn in putting this role together in this specific production? What did you learn the first time? And what do you hope to add on the second time around? The sound was coming on and off. I'm not sure about the last part. So you didn't hear it properly? No, I didn't get the actual question, the last, last, last part. So we apologize because it is the first time we experience something like this today. I don't know why, probably it's the internet, the bandwidth, something. But we can read it because we have it written in front of us, so we can read it and be sure that you understand correctly what she asked. Thank you. Uh, so the question is, uh, you are about to reprise the role of Traviata at the Wiener Staatsoper after debuting the role last year at Opera de Paris. What did you learn in putting together this role for first time and th what do you hope to achieve further now? Well, uh, firstly, I love the production so much and I was very happy to have uh, such a beautifully thought of a modern production of this Traviata in, in Paris. 
and now to be co-produced here in Vienna. Violetta is uh, one of the most incredibly complex, deep, um, and very, very um, challenging soprano roles. And not only the role is new for my, for my instrument, but also the composer. So I'm learning a lot on how to balance, you know, um, um, the way I was making music in the Belcanto repertoire compared to um, how Verdi wants to be expressed. And I'm grateful for the team that is always there to help me, uh, uh, you know, take those steps of learning. And for me, it still feels new, especially because of having this huge gap of not singing um, during the pandemic. And so coming back, it's like starting afresh again. But I'm hoping that I'll be <laughs> more confident this time. <laughs> Because at least I've done it once, right? <laughs> Maybe twice. It should be so, fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I'm hoping that in my head I can have some sort of peace that uh, it's not so new anymore. And, uh, and uh, you know, it always helps because we, we grow more and learn more by doing. And uh, as a live performer, it's always new. I always say this, no matter how prepared you can be, um, uh, but the actual doing of that particular uh, uh, performance or rehearsal is always new every time. So I'm hoping that um, uh, the joy of actually doing it, I remember, you know, while doing it, <laughs> because I love the role so much and I believe that it will stay with me for some time in my career. Just to add on that question, I just want to ask you a crazy question. How long oh. did you how long did it take you to 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 study the role and then perform it? How much did you study the role before you, you sang it on stage? Uh I think I've always loved Traviata. And when I first heard about um opera, I found this uh, uh radio program in South Africa called this opera and mm. they would play opera and I actually think that the first thing I recorded was a full performance of Traviata mm. and I used to actually um, listen to it every day and sing on top of it so I've sung Traviata for a very long time <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of learning it I, I learned quite quickly uh, I can always just, I've just always been gifted in learning very quickly, but the process of actually technically being savvy and uh, actually managing the balance emotionally for the character, as well as the demands of the composer, that takes some time. I'm still learning that and I'm still, um, I, I guess that's the moving target that we're talking about, because yeah. it is a creative process every time. If I may, because we're talking about roles and repertoire, uh, first of all, I, I really liked what you said about uh, Montserrat Caballese and about singing what is good for you now instead of what you're aiming for in the future. That's so spot on. Um, I want to ask, because you're one of the most versatile sopranos of, of our days, with <laughs> hopping from Mozart to Donizetti, doing Carella, Rosina, like Traviata now. So do you advise young artists um, being out, out of the box and uh, willing to try new, different things? <coughs> or, or does having a very specific path, um, especially at the beginning of your, of your career, opens easier the, the doors uh, for new jobs and, and in the market? I would actually say I think I've grown so much because I wouldn't allow myself not to try. But at the very same time, I've always been surrounded by a good team that would advise me and say, mm, maybe not that role. Mm, maybe not that role. Why do you want to sing that role? I remember <laughs> my voice teacher in South Africa, I said, I, I, there was this area that I liked so much. And then she was like, okay, pretty, but why do you want to sing that role? You know? So there's always a calculated decision from an artistic point of view for every opera that I've done. I've never just done it because um, it was just in my head. It has always been calculated 
and I've grown a lot by that. And I believe that if you have a good team that will still advise you, you know, on your artistic decisions when it comes to your repertoire is very, very important. That openness, though, to try out. Some, some roles I've even tried out without actually performing them, but just studying. And that study helps in my, in my growth as well. So as far as the Fach system goes, for any young singer, and this was something that my voice teacher, Virginia Davids, would always say that as a young person, it's very hard to put yourself already in a, in a sort of box because the voice is still developing and it's impossible to really, really determine that I am this. To some, it's always evident but not all the time. So I think there has to be some sort of balance and openness to try and try not to, you know, to just uh, be one, you know, one-sided. Sorry, would you say, does that happen a lot with sopranos? Because with tenors, it's quite sometimes easier to, to tell what, what, what far you can sing, but would you say it, it happens a lot with sopranos or sopranos? What do you think? What's your take on I that? Would, I, as a soprano, I think we are most complex because we have such a vast um, um, capacity of instruments. Like no soprano sounds like the next. And yet there are so many things that are possible uh, uh, and are always a mystery for the for the female voice, I guess. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that for sopranos, I think uh, there are so many ways that you know the voice can develop in in, in different repertoire, uh, and also as, as uh, you know, looking at your age and your experiences. So there are a lot of factors that actually sometimes contribute. Um, yeah. to the soprano than the tenor. The tenor is yeah. always, <laughs> always an obvious <laughs> case. I mean, since we're talking about roles, um, I, I know you started singing so many roles from South Africa, the University of Cape Town in collaboration with Cape Town Opera. I know I remember your first role. I think your first role was, was, was Lenos Le Figaro, right? Yes. Countessa. And then after that, so many people don't know about this. And now I'm being very noisy, very naughty. <laughs> After that, you had to do uh, Cosi Fantuti, and I remember the, the 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 challenge you had in terms of weight loss and the costume because of the you didn't do that purpose, but the production required that. Yeah. What gave you that courage at a university level for you to just go in full force with with with, with losing weight? after a short period of time to be in a bathing suit for 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 <laughs> Diligi. I think I was just so hungry to make sure that I have all the attributes that contribute to a successful opera singer. I wanted to make sure that there's nothing that I can be asked to do and not be able to achieve it. Yeah. And that was a big lesson also um, for us in, in school uh, about weight because some, some uh, opera directors are very adamant about that. And so I wanted to know if, if that opportunity came, will I be able to actually make the adjustments? And uh, fortunately, yes. But also at the very same time, I then wanted to make sure that I never want to lose a job because somebody thinks that I am not looking the part. Yeah. At yeah. the same time, I needed to draw a line that it is my body, it is my voice. I will make sure that I do what I need to do to be healthy so that I have the, the, the possibility to be uh, productive, but not because I just want to... Uh, because of the you know the size of my waist no yeah it's more for health and we are after all athletes we yeah. need the stamina we need to be strong we need yeah. to be, for me it became even uh, uh, you know it developed into even something much more than just uh, being able to lose weight like that yeah, yeah. um just to to ask another question i know this is not planned but this is so interesting and i think it's it's <laughs> it's, it's very good for our young singers to understand that you did you didn't just become who you are today. It started somewhere. Mm -hmm. I want to mention Professor Angela Kubato as well. With the repertoire, with the range of the repertoire that we used to do at school, do you think it was because now you you, you it 
I think, is it okay, is it easier for you to sing the roles now? Because you've done all of them before at school. For instance, Mano, Leonard, the Fico, the Countess, Phil some some roles. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I cannot I can mention just those few. Do you think it was a good thing that you did them at the university level? Uh, and it's easier for you to do them now? It was a good exercise because it helped with stamina. It helped me to understand that there is no way that I could get on stage and not finish an opera. Because we used to sing quite a lot in, in school. And so yeah. it built that physical stamina. Yeah. And as far as it being easier now, maybe I'm much more uh, techni technically secure than I was then. But at the very same time, I'm meeting new challenges with the technical you know, uh, uh, asks that I need to attend to right now with the voice that I have now and where I am. Mm -hmm. But the experience helps a lot. So it was, it was much needed and much appreciated. And another thing, just, I'm sorry again. Right, sorry, <laughs> we know each other too much. So I had to make sure that all the young singers, they learn as much as they can, because I know this is the only information I can get now. And to put, okay, put no problem, no problem. So no problem for us too, you left, you left South Africa. The funny thing, when you left home, you came to Europe. And of course, we were expecting you to sing all these big roles. And you were being offered a few nice things. And you had courage to actually say, no, I'm not ready for that, but I can do that. I remember you also started singing Barbarina. I mean, we never saw you as Barbarina completely from Countess Manon to Barbarina in Europe. Did that help you to find why make the choice of doing the small roles in the big stage while you have the opportunity to, to do the bigger roles too? Because I understood that I can either have it all now and lose it all now, or I can do it one step at a time because there's no rush. I can always sing that role, but I don't have to sing that role today. Like let Traviata, for example. I've mm. been offered Traviata ever since I got to Europe, but I always said, no, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready because mm. it's my favorite role, one of my favorite roles, but I also am not ready. My voice is not ready to handle the demands of the role, let alone the emotions of the mm. character, let alone being not technically ready. You know, there is nothing so uh, sad than doing a role and you're not ready. And yeah. if you had just waited, you would have been in a much better uh, space. And then you're also happy. You're not so stressed out because you have this mountain that you don't know how yeah. to solve, but you've already said yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, can, I add, can I add something to your question, Sonny Boy? Sure. So pretty, my question is, does a career, uh, do we build a career on no's or yes? No's. I mean, are no's necessary sometimes? This is Most times, no's are very, very necessary because it's the contrary. Sometimes they say, no, you have to say yes because it's an opportunity. No, sometimes you have to say no because this world will never stop asking. But you know you only have yourself and you know, you're limited. So your choices have to be very calculated. For a young singer, how do you know if it's the right time to do a role or it's not the right time to... I mean, because, look, Pretty, to be honest, you have to be realistic as well. Mm. There's so many of us, and so we all fight for that sport. And every opportunity that a young singer could get from university, from having nothing or nobody there for them and getting a contract, even if it takes that, that, that person is not ready, but they are capable of doing it, how do you know that then, do, do I go for it? What do you say in that situation? Well, I think I'm gonna say in my case, how do I know that the role is good for me? It is proposed. I look at the score with my pianist, they play it for me. I sing a little bit, I leave it. 
And then when I sing it again, if I'm feeling better the second time, then I know it's the right role. Doesn't negate that in the score, there are technically very difficult sports that any other colleague or singer would have in it's just how the score is so um you have to you i have always known that okay i need to learn this role because every time i sing it i listen to it i feel that it's getting better each time but if i get a, a proposal and then i sing the role and then i sing it again like like going through it and it becomes difficult then i know it's not the role for me it's so funny that you say that. I remember when I came to see you, Barbarina in, in, in La Scala, <laughs> you were you were warming up with Lucia, already starting to rehearse Lucia to sing all the 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 the, the scene which with the with the with the big notes. It was yeah. the cadence, I think. It was the for me the in the Lucia the Regnava nel silenzio cavalletto was the yes, music. yeah, with the trill. I remember that, and it's so fascinating that you say all these things, and I think it's valid enough to all the, our young singers that you know. Uh, you are such a great inspiration and a good example of uh, how to study, how to say I am ready for a role. Then you have to always go to the difficult parts and, and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and go back to the role that you do that is small. You have more stamina in that way. You're building progress on the other side as well. And I think your hard work and hardships that you faced made you who you are today. Because I always get mad when people are saying you're lucky. Yeah, I, mean, I get a little bit frustrated because I'm, I'm never no lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I, nobody is lucky. You are a singer. You get that because it's so tough and it's a harsh industry. Yeah. And so there's no luck. Of course, there is a luck when you get somebody that will represent you if they like you. But to get a job, nobody's lucky to get a job. You get a job because you work hard for it. You sing well enough that they see that you're capable of doing it. And so I think to our young singers, really, you, you are such an inspiration. I wish we can just open the whole book and let them see you rehearsing, I mean, Lucia at that early stage, singing Mano from that early stage and look at you now. What do you say to yourself, taking all the stuff that you've done before and you got to do all these roles now, what do you say? Do you always, do you sometimes give yourself credit? For, for 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 achieving what you've achieved till now i know <laughs> i know I, that's what i'm asking <laughs> that's what i'm asking uh, but i'm learning i'm learning to thank myself for making those high choices because they are they contributed a lot in my growth um mm. i remember just thinking you know i don't sleep not because I'm stressed out, but I want to know how can I do this better? You know, how can I make that phrase much more? Because I've always wanted to keep my authenticity as an artist and honesty. Yeah. And I think in a way, some critics are picking that up, that I'm not following what everybody's doing. I'm just a rebel in a sense, whether it is my approach in, in a role shenically or acting wise or even color wise and so sometimes i get very frustrated with myself because i know i can do that thing perfectly technically if i just don't listen to what my instinct is inspired in that moment when i do that when i do the performance and then when i listen to them like oh <laughs> but i know how to do it right when i don't have to connect and so um, I've come to, to, to be kind to myself and thank Angelo Covato as well, because he was one of the, pe the, pe the people who, who made me understand that I need to decide what kind of an artist I want to be. Do I want to be the kind of artist who sings everything perfect? Absolutely. Do I want, there's another kind of art form where it might not be as refined and perfect, but it touches each and everybody and their lives are transformed forever whether you didn't hit that high note perfectly or that scale whatever but do you want to be that kind of artist i said yes i want to be that kind of artist because that is what brought me to this art form because oh mirella freni would sing like see me 
me, me. And you'll be like, oh, you know, everything would just go like, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, I'm grateful for the, for my yeah. past. <laughs> yeah. Since you, you touch a very important, uh, 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 point about critics. I mean, our industry is brutal. Sometimes critics are there to boost you and help you to grow. Sometimes they just really tough that you feel depressed yeah. after a performance. You just don't want to sing again. Mm -hmm. For a young singer who doesn't know this part of the business, how do you take criticism? How how do, what is what is your experience? What what how do you tell yourself to to encourage yourself when you get a negative criticism? Well, I've come to learn that I must not put so much importance because it was kind of distracting my goals, my artistic goals. I know what goals I have for my growth. And sometimes when you read what everybody else think, you sort of shift the focus and want to solve what they are talking about. And so even if it's a good or a bad critic, I'm starting, I started not to pay too much uh, attention on it because it was affecting my focus into my artistic growth. Because as much as everybody has an opinion, you too, you have your own opinion about your growth and how you want to go about um, to grow. Yeah. And they may be right, they may not be right, but it is their opinion and it's their job, yes. You have your own job too, to, that yeah. you need to focus on yeah. and uh, you know, to, to keep going, moving forward. So and, concentrate on ourselves pretty, right? Not to what is happening outside of us. Yeah, because you have a team of people that you know their opinion matters because they know you and they know what you can achieve. And they know exactly what you were going through during that particular time then that the critic gave you a, a red card, basically, you know. So just have, a, you know, keep your circle. I call mine the pretty army, the people that I know that know me and are always there, you know, to also allow me to do, have the courage to try out things and grow. Uh, because for me, the most important is growth. Mm. And I only do that when I when I perform. Because yeah. everybody can sing in the shower and get it right in a yes. safe space. <laughs> but actually being in the arena is where the true uh, uh, growth is. Also, I just want to ask another question since we're talking about, I mean, we're talking about composers. Which composer do you prefer to sing the most? Rossini, Donizetti? Ah, Verdi. Rossini, my friend. <laughs> You know, I love him so much, Rossini. Rossini has yeah. been a, a huge um, uh, part in my vocal growth and development, actually. It's a big, big part of, of, of my uh, growth has been from, from him. Although I know my soul loves Bellini. Yeah. Uh, Bellini love, there's a huge Bellini love there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. So. Shall we pass to the conductor's perspective with Yanni? Yes. <laughs> sure. yes, I mean, um, you've been talking about the people who help you with their advice. And I think this is the most important because we, we talk about the critics and how you kind of kind of listen to them with, you know, some doubt or when you're driven enough, you don't even need that. You know what you're doing. Um, but at the same time, I want to ask, what do you feel that conductors, because you've worked with many of the greatest conductors of, of our time, what do you think are they are requiring from you, from singers? What is that that they want you uh, mainly to do? And if you can do the opposite, uh, what do you think is their skill, the skill that, that would be perfect for you? to be able to follow them and be more secure and comfortable. Kind of put I them on, to, on the spot. On the spot. I think I would say the biggest lesson that I'm seeing from any of them is that they appreciate 
preparedness that a singer comes prepared and i always want to make sure that when i enter the rehearsal room i am as prepared as i can be but at the very same time i'm usually the younger one in the room <laughs> so um their experience you know propels them not to put so much trust into a young singer because they want to help them and so if i were the other way around it's only when they hear me make, make music then they relax and then they trust you yeah. know and so if i would to put the way around i would say i would love for them to trust us more yeah because ultimately we can be guided um but when we do the doers know what what is happening and that plays a huge part in how we perform the artistic choices yeah. that we do in the moment or before have a great deal about you know taking advice from a person who's doing it or being told by a person who's watching yeah this this collaboration this hand hand by hand yes. going i mean I, I remember my my girl always always used to say I, I used to ask him what what should i do in this case let's say with the singer and he said you will feel it it's there's no recipe you have yes. to trust them or you have to guide them or you have to you have to find this language yes. between you uh which will work for both absolutely and so i can understand from you it's the same uh, exactly and also as a young singer or as the singer uh the the, the relationship between the conductor and the singer is very important it, that collaboration is very very important and so sometimes you might not be able to express yourself so i never argue with the with the conductor or express myself you know verbally i always wanted to use my music making as a way to communicate to the conductor what i think i'm being inspired to and sometimes most times we are actually talking the same language so as a young singer yeah. respect is very very important yes and to take what the conductor wants is very important but at the very same time you need to know that music making and your creativity is valid too and most times yes. they will complement this collaboration between the singer and the conductor i think you've touched a very strong point when you say especially to our young young viewers that you never argue with the conductor you just have no. to you have to speak with your musicality and what you have to offer and i think that's the exactly. very good weapon to have as a young singer because it is so hard to 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 not to say what you want to say to somebody who's well experienced who's been there before you yes yeah absolutely sure we can't hear you maria unmute yeah. yourself yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry for this so uh we can pass to the next question of 360 of opera uh, would you like to try the video version and then we see if it doesn't work yeah. Uh, we can read it. My second question is about the singer's journey. And I would like to know if you have some advice for young singers on how to manage their development while finding themselves in the spotlight. Yeah, did it work? It did. It worked this time or no? No, no I think you, you need to I, read it. So you see the video, but not the sound? Why it is no place? sound. It says tap sound, that what it says. Let me try once more. No, it, it cuts. My second question is about the singer's journey. And I would like to know if you have some advice for young singers on how to manage their development while finding themselves in the spotlight. So this time didn't work either? Let's read it, Maria. You have to read, read it because it. you know during the, the 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 video the sound goes on and off so it's incomplete so when we tested it it worked normally but it seems we have to read it apologies Eugenia. so we have to read your question uh so the the question is quite short but very much to the point she says what do you advise uh, how do you advise singers to manage their development 
while finding themselves in the spotlight? Um, I think it's important to have a good team. That is a very, very important thing because um, uh, when you have that feedback from people that uh, want the best for you, then all your artistic decisions will have a much more possibility of success. And uh, I'm not sure about spotlight because you are always spotlight, whether you are singing at the Met or you're singing in, in whatever opera house. So everywhere you are, you are in the spotlight and it's your moment to create. And I can only hope that you find joy in that way. So Preeti, when you talk about having a team, for young singers might be confused what you mean by having a team, because it, it is, uh, do do you form do you, how do you get how how do you form the team that you want it's the support system from mm -hmm. your voice teacher your vocal coach uh the person who helps you to study it's um it's the school you know mm -hmm. um it's the director it's the conductor you know, they all form part of what mm -hmm. it means for your performance to be a performer. Yeah. It's, your, it's your family, the people who support you. It's your friends. Um, you know, so that base of, of trusted people that you know have your back, especially yeah. when it comes to your vocal development with the voice teacher, the vocal coach, and the people who help you prepare. Cool. I just wanted to ask you another random question. Since you are also a, a recording artist, the, would you think, would, what would you say, what is your advice? I mean, to young singers who inspire to have CDs like you, do you think is it, is it easy to get into the recording artist um, field rather than the opera field? What is your advice to young singers if they want to pursue either? There is no easy way. Mm -hmm. Every kind of path to success, to your growth is never easy. Mm -hmm. And so there are different careers, absolutely, that got different demands. And so anything is possible when mm. you have the willpower. You just mm. have to make a decision about it. And mm. know that when I decide to pursue this path, I need to overcome a mm. lot yeah. and mm. never give up while I'm overcoming. Uh, can I ask something about the studio rec uh, for the recordings? Do you find this uh, environment more difficult uh, for interpreting something instead of being on stage with the contact of people? How do you compare those situations? It's very hard. It's not easy because uh, I think the magic is always in the present, in the room, from one soul to the next. And that magic is like, uh, it's like shaking hands. And so mm -hmm. when you're performing to an empty hall, it's like you're reaching and it's cold, it's not warm. And uh, I miss also the spontaneity that happens in the moment. Uh, that always happens when there's an audience because I feel in the atmosphere, the reaction, you know, uh, I'm being inspired to move this direction because of something that just happens in the moment. And so to create that also in the studio is not so easy. So you have to have even much more faith. I call it a faith game, <laughs> you know, because you have to believe that somebody is receiving this. Yeah. Because it's always about giving and it's, it's nice when you give to receive. As much as we give to the audience, we receive so much from them too. I want to ask another question. Sorry, guys, I'm being the, the, the bad guy here. I'm shooting so much. <laughs> Don't ask sorry, do it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the point. Uh, uh, my question is... Uh, for young singers, it's it's quite difficult to, to be driven as you are in terms of knowing exactly who, what is good for them in terms of trusting either a coach or a conductor or what what can you say they should. 
what how do they how should they what should they feel to know that this person means means well for them or they, wants the best for them in terms of being in, in the safe environment uh, in terms of roles deciding what to do and because i think this is what we we, we need to get to know with young singers sometimes we just go with the flow and we work with different people and this one tells me this and the next day we do this one this is things that we encounter every day with maria when you consult with so many of them i want to work with this one it's like uh, they're jumping and hopping everywhere and so i just want you to say listen wh what is it that they need to look for if the person works for them are there any signs or how do you know that the person is there for, for the right reasons I think that character plays a huge part in any decision making when it comes to any path that you will pursue as a human being. Mm. There are things that you, you should know that contribute in your decision making. Wisdom yeah. is very important to see and to be aware and how to, you know, not make the same mistakes, you know, how to commit, uh, you know, you can commit to be help by somebody and give them time that if by this time i'm not seeing the growth that i was looking for find ways to find other means to be help helped and to to still pursue going forward do you still have a teach do you still advise people to keep a teacher i mean in your profit in, in in your stage of uh, the career do you still have a teacher that you go to all the time? And say, the, the reason why I'm asking seriously, because these are the questions we have every day with Maria can tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. Singers are just sometimes a little bit uh, slow in terms of understanding that it doesn't matter where you are and who you are. You always have to have that somebody who you trust and will always yes. go to and remind you of what is going on. Do you, do you advise them to do that? Absolutely, absolutely, because I, I never stop growing. For example, in this Traviata, I, I, I seek, I, I searched for a, another mentor to learn from her, you know, how did, how does she make this Violetta sound so incredible? And she was generous enough to give me her time. And I've been working with her and still doing rehearsals, uh, work four hours, going through the role, learning tricks. So you never stop learning. Uh, so that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, both of you. I just have to add here that uh, I received comments from people attending that they heard the 360s questions. It is only us that we can't hear them. Uh -huh. I don't know why, but the people were able to hear, thank God. So, um, going to the end of our conversation, unfortunately, pretty. It's so flawless and so full of information that we don't want to stop with you today. But uh, my, my last question for today has to do with social media. I think you are using them very wisely and I have personally followed you since some years. And uh, you have been a very influential figure for many aspiring young opera singers through your activity there. You often speak about the importance of maintaining work-life balance and mental health. Uh, despite the challenges of the operatic profession, which is really hard. Uh, how can young artists stay happy people despite dealing daily with things like the pursuit of perfection, criticism and others' expectations of them? I would say it's very important, number one, never to compare yourself with anybody else. Who we are on social media is very unique. You cannot assume and value yourself compared to other people. So keep yourself sane by looking into your own life and determining how you want your, your life is, not because you're comparing yourself with, with somebody else. In general, it takes off the pressure of wanting your page to look like somebody else's because you know, you're chasing likes. I've never been the person who wanted to, to use my social media for that. In fact, the opposite, I wanted to show my followers and friends that I am human. And no matter how successful I am, no matter how much you adore me and, and support me, I still face normal human beings experiences because I'm not exempted from being a human being. At the same time, my private life is my private life. And you also need to keep that. 
Um, and so really taking off the pressure from anybody else's expectations lies a lot in really concentrating in your in your own life and appreciating everybody else you know very nicely but not necessarily wanting to compare yourself with them thank you very much so no imitation <laughs> for god's sake <laughs> being original it's it's what makes you what makes you different and and that's what we actually want don't we yeah absolutely that's the beauty Nard. I sense that Sunny wants to say something here. No. I, no? <laughs> okay, very nice. So, Preeti, we would like to thank you from the deep of, of our heart to being here with us today and joining and sharing your career path and your experience with music. And uh, the phrase that you said previously, acknowledge each other's excellence, could be at Elliot Excellence's motto, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because it is 100% our yeah. philosophy. And uh, while I, I, I try to, with Sunny Boy and Yanis, to make the script, let's say for today's interview, we'll I read a lot of interviews of yours and a lot of your things that exist on the web. And we saw that many people call you Cinderella, it's an arendola of opera. <laughs> and when, when we think of Cinderella, we, we think of the wedding dress of the prince of all the beauty and, and the fairy tale part, but we don't concentrate a lot on what makes a Cenerentola, a Cinderella. Exactly. Which is exactly what you described here today, that it is the thirst for what we want, the passion for what we love, uh, loving others, acknowledging others, embracing ourselves. It is so many values that we have to keep to move forward in this path. Yes. That lives, our lives have, our life, sorry, has for us. And um, this is amazing because it is a great, great example for everybody that wishes this fairy tale career. This fairy tale career has the hardships and there is a specific way to get there, which is not so easy, but yeah. still the objective is very, very noble and it's worth. No fairy tales. This is life. This is real life. This is real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We are very grateful to Sunny Boy for connecting us with you. Thank and uh, he always uses us as an example when he speaks with uh, young singers. And uh, thank you very much, Sunny Boy, for no, joining today, you. for organizing this with us. And, uh, and Yanis, also our AD associate. And uh, for Pretty, my, my wish personally is to shine for as many years as possible on stage and to be a happy and healthy person as you are today forever yeah. and, and to make our lives prettier. I know it sounds cliche, but you make our lives pretty. <laughs> awesome. Thank you and so, so much. Yeah. The gentleman want to say something to Pretty? Uh, I, I would just say, Mayenda, really, thank you so much for joining it, us and taking your time on yeah. your birthday. Really, we appreciate you and uh, yeah, all the best and God bless you even more. Thank you so much. God bless you, Pretty. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for your attendance and see you again soon. Ciao. Absolutely. Ciao, Ciao. Ciao. It has been very inspiring. <laughs> thank you very Thank you, Yanis. Thank you, Sonny Boy. Thank you, Pretty, once more. Ciao. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao.